am really enjoying myself doing Love Never Dies. Um, it's for me because obviously, as I've always said from the beginning, Meg is, has the biggest journey. So innocent and sweet and lovely at the beginning and then uh, uh, comes crashing down. So I'm not really, you know, massively featured. The bits that I do do are really, are really poignant. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. Jack O'Brien didn't really give me a backstory. Um, I was probably one of the only people he didn't because she, you know, she has one, which is that she was Christine's best friend at the Paris Opera. But as far as what happens after that, she just went along with everything. You know, there, there wasn't really much to say. She didn't, she was only 15 when she left. And, you know, when you're 15 and at that time, you did do whatever your parents told you to do. So, you know, her mother just said, right, this is what we're doing, we're going now. And she went. And then, you know, she obviously has um, has had to just get on with it and, 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 and learn to be someone that kind of just... Uh, is a chameleon and, and is something for whoever she, whoever wants her to be at that time. You know, she's a people pleaser, and uh, and I mean, obviously for the for the end and everything, all that stuff comes out in the dialogue. So you you know, I didn't have to have a backstory. You know, if that was no that wasn't a backstory. It was just there in the in the dialogue. So um, she, it's wonderful for me because I can change it up. I can mix it up a little bit. Um, in my own, you know, no one else would know, no, the audience wouldn't know probably, but uh, but I know, which is the most important thing. I think there's, I don't think she's in love with the Phantom, I think she has a love for him, which is, um, because he's, you know, he's shown um, in, the, in the first Phantom that what love he's capable of giving, and so anyone who sees that in a person surely would have some sort of uh, wow if he can love someone like that maybe he could love me like that um but i don't think she's actually in love with him you know it's i think i think she's in, in love with the idea of somebody loving her the way he loves christine um you know and so um i think some nights maybe meg thinks that she's in love with him and other nights i don't you know me some are, some are playing meg i you know um so, uh, yeah, it, it, I, I do mix it up a lot. So in the last scene, I do sometimes when he touches me for the first, you know, because it probably is the first time he's touched her. I mean, it's not in a in a intimate way. It's not in a sensual way. It is just him trying to calm her down. But some nights I might enjoy that more than I would if it was just a friend. I think Meg lacks a lot of love um, from from all parties. I mean, she's Madame Giry is just given. She's giving the phantom love the whole time, and, and Meg's just had to go along with things. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think she knows deep down that her mother loves her, but, um, you know, and then she's got the phantom who's just pining after Christine all the time. And not that she knows that, and she only finds that out, you know, at the beginning of the show. You don't actually see how she feels about that, you know, because she's sent away by the mother, which is probably what happens a lot. You know, something will happen and she'll say, go to say a, an opinion and, and Madame Julie will, you know, shoot her down straight away. So that's why at the end she, she snaps because there's no one has ever listened to her.